Hey everyone, Kelsey here and welcome back to Gal. Today I'm going to show you how to create a really cool frozen cloning effect where your subject jumps into future frames of their movement. Now I first stumbled upon this effect by Leia Motion on Instagram. She makes these really awesome short looping videos with celebrities and other artists where they walk into future cloned versions of themselves. Now, if you're not following Leia on Instagram, you definitely should be. Her handle is at Leia Motion. In this tutorial, we're going to start in Premiere Pro showing you how to create freeze frames. And then I'm going to show you how to use Dynamic Link to rotoscope out your frames using the Rotobrush tool. And then we're gonna come back to Premiere Pro and put it all together. And a huge thanks to our friends at MixKit for supporting today's video. MixKit has hundreds of free assets for your next video project, from stock video, stock music, sound effects, and some pretty cool video templates. I made some videos on their Instagram templates and transitions, which are linked below that you should definitely check out when you have a chance. Thanks MixKit for sponsoring today's video. And now let's jump into the tutorial. You'll find the time codes below to follow along. So for this beginner's tutorial, we are going to use a video clip that does not have any motion. This makes it easier to create freeze frames. So if you're going to film yourself, be sure to bring a tripod along because it'll make this effect so much easier. To create your first freeze frame, scrub to the moment you want to make your first freeze point. Then click on the camera icon from the program monitor to export the frame. If you're like, wait, where's my camera icon? What you can do to bring it in is click on the plus icon to the right to add the camera icon to your program menu here. Now from this new window, let's go ahead and name this freeze frame, freeze frame one, and then make sure to save this frame to a folder on your computer or an external drive so that way you can keep all of your files organized. I usually create a folder called stills and then I save it inside of that folder. And lastly, just be sure to check import into the project. And I like to save it as a PNG. So now we can drag this imported PNG from our project panel into the timeline and we can roll it out or roll it in to end at the current time playhead, which was the moment where we made this freeze frame. Now that's really important here. Make sure that it ends here because once that person runs into this freeze frame, which we'll get to in a moment, that freeze frame will then disappear. So that's why the clip ends here. And now let's go ahead and repeat this same process for freeze frame two. So scrub to the next point you want to make a freeze frame, then click the camera icon, and then once it's exported, drag it back into the timeline and then roll this freeze frame to the second playhead point. And then you can repeat this process for as many frames as you want. For me, I'm going to make four freeze frames for this effect. After you make the freeze frames, I recommend ordering and stacking the first freeze frame up at the top layer and the other layers in a descending order just below. The reason I have all freeze frames starting at the beginning is because we want all of them to be visible as the person is running or moving into the future freeze points of themselves. So it's important that they're there in the beginning until they meet that action point. So now we need to mask out each freeze frame layer. Let's go ahead and turn off freeze frame two, three, and four. So that way we can isolate and work on freeze frame one. One option for masking, and trust me, it's the much more difficult option. You can select this freeze frame, go up to effect controls, choose the pen tool to carefully mask out the figure by clicking and holding to make curved edges and then clicking around to complete your mask. But it's really difficult to be precise with the pen tool in Premiere Pro. It'll just take a really long time. And trust me, it's way too tedious for this type of effect. This is why I recommend using Dynamic Link with After Effects to use the Rotobrush tool to rotoscope the subject out, creating a transparent background behind it. Masking is just not worth it in this case. You gotta go to the Rotobrush tool. So to do this, you're going to right click on this first freeze frame and select Replace with After Effects Composition. Now in After Effects, double click to open up the image as its own layer, then go to the Rotobrush tool and then just select over the subject with the green brush and you can see 
that the Roto Brush tool automatically detects the edges and if there's any areas that need to be fixed, while you're clicking, just press the Alt key and this will deselect any areas of the selection that you do not want. So another thing you can do is press Command or Control on a PC and click and push in or out on your mouse to change the size of the Roto Brush tool so that way you can go into the smaller areas and do some more refinement if necessary. It really does a good job on its own though. So once the selection is looking good, you can go back to the composition and from effect controls, you can play around with the parameters to clean up the edges. So we can try decontaminating the edge colors to remove some of the imperfections. We can play around with the Roto Brush Matte tools until we achieve a clean workable edge that will be good for your shot. So it might not be perfect, but more often than not, the edge doesn't have to be perfectly clean for this effect to be believable by your audience. So once it's done, let's go back to Premiere Pro and now we have our first run into the freeze frame complete. You can see that now this first composition on the top layer has a transparent background behind it. So our layer underneath, that's the full video shot, is able to run into our first freeze frame. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing for the three other freeze frames using Dynamic Link and using the Roto Brush tool. So after you finish the rotoscoping and everything is looking good, once you go back to Premiere Pro, you're going to have to render it out to see. And the thing with After Effects comps inside of Premiere Pro is it usually takes a long time to render and the playback is quite slow. So to fix this and to save time so you're not gonna be pulling your hair out watching this render, you can actually export the first frame of each roto with an alpha channel in After Effects and then replace the dynamically linked comps with these new exported frames from After Effects. So let me show you how this works. You're going to open up the first linked comp in After Effects, turn on the transparency, and then go up to composition, save frame as, file, and then click on the output module and change the format here to PNG and make sure the RGB plus alpha are turned on. Then hit okay and save it to your drive. And then just repeat this process for each composition until you have all of the frames exported. And once this is done, go back to Premiere Pro, import all of those new frames that you exported from After Effects into a folder and then drag and replace each composition in your timeline with the new freeze frame. So just drag and drop them and line them up. And now you'll be able to render it out super fast to see the final result. And now to export this for social, just go up to file, export media, and export it as a H.264 high bitrate file. So once it's exported, if you wanna turn the MP4 file into a GIF, I use this really neat app called GIFSKI where I can drag my video clip in and export it as a GIF super fast. I think it's just available for Mac right now. It might be available on PC, but it's super handy. So if you would like a tutorial on how to do this effect with a moving shot that's not on a tripod, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're on social media, you're scrolling through Instagram and you see an effect that you want to learn how to make, be sure to leave a comment below and describe what effect you're talking about and the handle of the creator, and I'll take a look. Thanks again to Mixkit for sponsoring this video and making free assets available to you. Be sure to download some of the assets and try it out for yourself. And now let's go to the product of the week. If you're sharing footage with other editors and collaborators on your team, I highly recommend the Promax Media Hub. It's a small eight terabyte SSD server that connects to my workstation via ethernet. I also have one for my editor. When I drop files into my media hub, it immediately shows up on my editors. Basically, the media hubs are exact mirror copies of each other, making it super fast for us to share files and collaborate on projects. So if you have a bunch of people all over the globe who need to share and work on the same video files and projects, I definitely recommend trying out the Promax Media Hub. I've included a link below if you're interested in more detail. 
That's all for today's video. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal.